The topic of SeaWorld Orlando adding another big new B&M has been going on for a while. We first published a video about this in January 2020, speculating that they were adding a wing coaster. Then in May of 2020, we heard that they might be actually adding the world's first B&M surf coaster. But we didn't really know what that was, and to some extent, we still don't know what that is. But then everything went silent. With the pandemic, we didn't know if the project was canceled. We know for sure it was put on hold. But recent information, thanks to a BGW fans article, tells us a lot more about this project, including a layout. So first of all, I highly recommend going to give this article a read. It is so incredibly detailed. They've done a wonderful job putting everything together, telling you what you need to know about this attraction. So if you haven't read it yet, by all means, please go check that out. I'll do a little paraphrasing here, but the bottom line is, it's unclear whether this attraction is still happening. If I had to take a guess, and by no means is this accurate, this is me just speculating, I imagine that this will happen still at some point. The real indicator to if it'll open in 2023 is if they start construction probably next summer. So it'll really just have to be one of those we'll have to wait and see sort of things. But if this is a world's first from B&M, I would be very surprised if they just canceled it completely. So going over a couple of the basic things, the ride is going to be located directly to the right of the front entrance. It is taking up what is mostly event space. This pathway is only open during certain times of year, like for Hallow Scream or SeaWorld's Christmas celebration. It goes largely unused most of the year, and it's one of the biggest problems problems with SeaWorld Orlando is the park is not a full complete circle without this path. So by adding a roller coaster there, they'd be able to completely tie everything together and also putting a big new thrill ride in a space where there is a severe lack of them. So the placement of this attraction is absolutely perfect. The great team at BGW fans also went above and beyond and created a layout animation to show what the ride would physically look like. It looks to be a fairly large roller coaster. We don't know exact heights or speeds at this point. It's all conjecture. Right here, you can see the blueprints and the layout of what has been acquired for this roller coaster, which has been codenamed Project Penguin. Whether or not it'll actually have a penguin theme, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. So what does that layout look like? Well, it's primarily made up of bank turns and helices. Although there is a launch and a single inversion, which is a corkscrew. And it's primarily going to stay over the pathways going in between the lake and the parking lot. So we're here at SeaWorld Orlando and we want to check out the actual site of the roller coaster. And this is all where it is going. In fact, this area right here is where the tallest point is going. Directly in between this pathway and the grill is right here, which means shortly, if this roller coaster does come to life, the highest point would be right here. So directly ahead is the park entry area. And this path that we're on is directly where the launch would be or might still potentially be. And again, up there is the highest point. A little bit further down, this is where the station would be, right here. And then the parking lot is just on the other side over there, park entry right there. Over here by the water, and the roller coaster will not go over the water, however, it will get very close. Where we're currently standing is where that one single inversion is described as, that corkscrew. So we come over here and basically go right over our heads and over to that side. Right here by this Ports of Coal sign be Helix. It head over in that direction as it makes its way towards the brake run. Currently this path is closed so we're not going to go down there. But yeah, this is actually a very large attraction to get this entire area. Being here in person really puts the size of this roller coaster into perspective. Right here is Bayside Stadium and this is pretty much going to be the far end. It's going to do a turnaround right here and then there would be another Helix over there. Again, we don't know for confirmed if the roller coaster is still planned, but what was planned before COVID was an absolutely huge attraction. So now you've seen how this ride would fit into the pathway, I'm not going to go in depth into each specific maneuver, at least not until we get an official announcement animation from SeaWorld Orlando, assuming this attraction still happens, just because the heights and speeds of all this are not finalized. If you want an in-depth look at some of the maneuvers you can expect though, again, go check out the article. The main thing that I want to cover in the rest of this video is what this addition would do for SeaWorld Orlando. Actually looking at the elements and what this ride would feature, it does not inherently do anything 
that you cannot get on another ride at SeaWorld Orlando, at least just when it comes to the layout. It's bank turns, helices, one corkscrew, a launch. You can find all of that at this park already, which makes me wonder why the team at SeaWorld Orlando would choose this addition. And I think that really goes back to the trains. After seeing this layout, I really think that we're going to be seeing some sort of stand-up train design because that inherently is the only thing that would make this ride different from every other roller coaster in the park. No one would go for this ride for the launch because you would already have that on Icebreaker. The bank turns are taller and faster on Mako. You can get a corkscrew on Kraken. So then why would you ride Project Penguin? If a surf coaster truly does mimic the feeling of surfing, then suddenly these elements make a lot more sense. In looking at the layout, I can totally see this as a stand-up coaster. It would also be the first stand-up coaster to feature a launch, which could be cool. And that also is something that then SeaWorld Orlando could market as a first of its kind. Without that stand-up feature or some cool, unique train design, Project Penguin suddenly becomes irrelevant. And with so many different types of roller coasters out there, it would have made a lot more sense for them to go with something else. I know people talk all the time about how SeaWorld Orlando should get a wooden roller coaster, especially after we just saw Texas Stingray at SeaWorld San Antonio, how awesome that is. Imagine something like that in this plot of land, how cool that would be. But instead they went with another B&M, which would make this SeaWorld Orlando's fourth. So I think after seeing all this, I personally am really starting to think that this is going to be a stand-up coaster of some sorts. It featured two across seating in the same sort of way of what they have on Steel Dragon. I believe right now those are the only B&M trains that are two across. And what sort of restraint design they would go with for this new generation of stand-ups remains to be seen. But regardless, I do think that this roller coaster will be very photogenic. It'd be hard not to. It's in such a great location. But everything about this edition is just very odd. I don't think I ever would have expected a stand-up at SeaWorld Orlando. But you gotta give them credit that is extremely different from everything else in Orlando and with so much competition you gotta either do something better than your opponent or something different and Universal just came out with Velocicoaster which was another launch coaster and I don't care what sort of train design this has I highly doubt this is gonna be better than Velocicoaster so SeaWorld Orlando said well let's do something different at least that's why I'm assuming is the mentality that they had so it'll be very interesting to see what happens if they go through with it I think it's great that they're finally putting a roller coaster in this area and that they're really utilizing the full space. I also love to see that they're continually investing in this park. They've been receiving a lot of love recently, and I think that is awesome. It stinks that the pandemic has thrown such a wrench in things, but if they continue to go through with this, then it shows that they were able to come out strong at the other side of it, which is great to see. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of Project Penguin? Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on the layout, what sort of train design we'll be seeing, and if you think that this was the right move for SeaWorld Orlando. And as usual, once we learn more information about about this roller coaster, we'll be sure to do a video on it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.